Hi, I'm Ray Camden, a developer evangelist for Adobe. And today I'm going to talk to you a bit about the security improvements in Cold Fusion 10. Now, there's a lot of things that have changed in Cold Fusion 10, especially in terms of security, so I won't be able to cover everything. What I'm going to do is kind of talk at a high level about what we've done and then show a few of the concrete examples of the, at the code level of what we've done to improve security as well. Now, there's three main areas of improvements in terms of security. First is in the product itself. So we have new functions, new tags, and those are things that I'll be showing a couple examples of today, as well as working harder to fix those bugs ahead of time and work with uh, security sc uh, scanning tools as well. We've also done some improvements on our process as well. And that includes actually having an internal Adobe security review as well as an external one as well, along with having a person on staff just worrying about security and having our quality assurance people also looking at security issues. And finally, we've also worked really hard to make it easier for you to know when there are security issues and when there are hot fixes for them. Now, in the past, we have not made it easy for you to install hot fixes. And when a hotfix does something with security, that's really a bad thing. We, we definitely acknowledge that. Well, Cold Vision 10 finally makes that a heck of a lot easier. You'll be able to, via the CF admin, actually see when a hotfix is available and install it right from within your browser itself. No more moving files around, no more doing downloads. It's going to be much easier in Cold Fusion 10. So that's the three main areas at, at a high level of what we've done in security. What I'm going to do now is show you a couple of quick examples of where at the code level what we've done to make it even easier for you to lock down and secure your applications. Now the first one I have is really kind of simple, possibly not something you may use very often, but if you want it, it's there. We've had a hash function in Cold Fusion for a long time. This creates a one-way hash from an input string into a random looking string. Now, one way that you can make a hash a bit more secure is to do multiple hashes. In the past, it would involve actually doing a CF loop and running it so many times. Well, now we've actually made the hash function actually support running any number of iterations. This can make a really, truly random uh, hash string. You can see on screen here, I have an example. On line four is kind of the old way of doing the hash. And on line six is the newer version where we've actually said to specify 30 iterations. Now, if we look at this, you really can't tell that it's run 30 times. But the last string is definitely going to be different than what the first string was. As another example, we've done a lot of work with cross-site scripting. That's where somebody puts something evil and mean within the input and your website displays it. Now we've always had HTML edit format as a way of escaping dynamic input. That's where it's fine in the past. What we've done in CF10 though is add a variety of new functions to lock down that input even more. Even greater is that we've actually given you a way to say, I'm going to use this input in a very particular way. Let me encode it for that particular use. If we look at the screen here, we have a really basic uh, form that I'm going to self-post to itself. I'm just running this as a quick way to d do a demo. And what I've done then is then simply output that result back on screen. Now on line 17 will be just a naked plain output. On line 20 is the older HTML edit format. Below that are examples of some of the new functions we have for encoding input. And you can see that we have very specific use cases for each. For HTML, for an HTML attribute, for JavaScript, for CSS, and for URLs. So what's nice now is that you have a variety of options depending on how you're going to use that dynamic input of how you're going to encode it. I'll run a quick example just so you can see the different ways that things get encoded. And I'm going to say this has some HTML, and I'll even do a link with an on click, on click doing something evil. In this case, a function evil, which won't probably do much. Okay. 
Now, when I submit this, again, we have all of the different options being run. Normally, you wouldn't do that. You would just pick the best one for the job. But you could see right away on screen how each of these things are being encoded. The first one, again, is just a pure naked, just output it to screen. And going down from there, we have our different options. And in all cases, this HTML is encoded and will be safe. Now, the next feature I want to show you is really, really interesting. It's called CSRF. And what it is is a way to associate a particular form with a particular user. What this will do is actually create a token that is associated with that form. When that user submits that form, we compare that token to a value stored in their session and ensure that it's one the same. What that means is if for some reason that particular form was saved and run by somebody else, they would not be able to submit that form because the token would not match up with their session value. Now what's nice is that we've made this really easy to use. You see on screen here, I have a very basic form. I have a username field and a submit button. But also note the hidden field that's working with the CRSF token. This is running a new function called CSRF generate token. And we actually have a few different options in there to make it even uh, more secure based on what you're doing. And I'm simply going to take that token and store it within a hidden form value. When I submit that form, I have another function that will verify that token. Now again, even though I'm passing a hidden form field, that hidden form field is actually being linked up with the user's session. If somebody else took that exact same form, they would not be able to run it. But for a user just doing things the right way, when they run this, they will see everything working correctly. And I will run this real quick and say hello and submit. And again, you could see that hidden form field in there. That's not really hidden. Anybody can view source. But if any other user had tried to use that token, it would not have worked for them. So that's just a few examples of what we've done at the language level. Again, we've worked across the board to ensure that Cold Fusion is more secure out of the box, in your code, and going uh, farther in, in the future as well. Thank you for watching.